Welcome to Satisfactory. My name is Nidos and this is a tutorial and showcase on turbo fuel and I can guarantee you that I have solved the biggest problem that we have with turbo fuel in uh, in the game and uh, that is what we're going to show here. This beautiful beautiful factory as you can see here is uh, is modular and that is the biggest solution to turbo fuel. Now what why would I say that? Well, turbo fuel is late game and I think a lot of us have been wanting to build a turbo fuel power plant, but then kind of got distracted because we started looking at the numbers that would be required in order for us to actually get this up and running. So that's why I've decided that it must be possible for us to make a modular setup that we can then just do in bits so that instead of uh, suddenly having 25,000 megawatts of power online and until we've spent the, I don't know, 50 hours building it, then we have nothing except a huge power drain Instead here, I have split it into modules. Each module is one floor of this tower here, and uh, that will be generating 2.1 gigawatts of power. That means you can build this, and then you can go do something else because you just got two gigawatts of power, and then you can come back and build the next level, and the next level, and the next level. And now that I build a few levels, it actually takes me about mm, half an hour to build another level. Uh, granted, of course, I don't make mistakes, so it probably takes about 45 minutes because I always make mistakes when I do these kind of things. Unfortunately, we don't have blueprints, but if we did have blueprints, then uh, you would uh, you would just be able to stamp down a blueprint. Now for this, uh, this is a design that comes over from my Twitch Let's Play. I am streaming this game on Twitch. It is at twitch.tv slash Nilaus and it's Tuesday, Thursdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time. And uh, I would encourage you to come by and we're doing some really cool designs all of this space that you, well, can't see from here. But uh, but I have a really big base and this is the what I'm doing and then I will be bringing it here to YouTube for guides, tutorials and that kind of thing. So if you like these guides and tutorials, be sure to hit the like button and uh, let me know in the comment section also if you have other good ideas. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, as I can see, a majority of the people watching my channel have not subscribed, then uh, consider subscribing. It helps me and uh, it also means that you can keep up with new content coming along. Now, what am I going to do here? Well, first. I want to show you sort of the, the basic concept of it, because now we've just been floating around while I've been entering. Oh, no, I'm falling. Uh, what I want to do is I want to build a level with you so you can see how it is. But first, we need to look at some of the basic premises for us to do. Uh, just I'm using four different alternate recipes. So, of course, you need all the four re diff alternate recipes in order for this to uh, to work. And uh, I think that's the easiest way is for us to just go in and build a level of, for ourselves. The one thing I want to show you is that the, we have one set of resources coming in for the entire tower. And it comes in at this level and the, the, this can support 12 floors of this. So 12 times the 2.1 gigawatt of power. That is the 25 gigawatt of power that this whole thing can do. I have a belt of sulfur coming in. I have built of coal coming in. I have two pipes of water coming in. And then I have somewhere over here, I have just a wee bit of oil coming in. Numbers, this is 337.5 oil per minute. It is 600 coal per minute. It is 600 sulfur per minute. And it's 900 water per minute. Those are the basics of what we need. And from this actually very modest amount, we can get 25 gigawatts of power. Let's get started and uh, build a first a new floor so we can see how it is. Uh, what I should be mentioning is that uh, if you, if I had to build like the every little, little bit, bit of detail here, then it would take way too long. So what I'm going to do is I am going to skip forward in steps. If you want to get the save game, then uh, I make all my save games for all my games available to Patreon supporters. So uh, that is one little uh, perk if to being a Patreon supporter. Let's start by making a clean level so we can build some so and a new floor here. Here we have the new floor built. This is basically a bit of a heart shape. I made a, a very conscious effort into not making it a square thing and also make it open so you can see the beautiful factories without sort of being just a flat platform. And uh, I think, of course, this means that it's going to be a bit more complicated. But on the other hand, it looks absolutely phenomenal when uh, when you look at the final build. Now, what I should uh, mention with uh, these modules, each module here is uh, going to be one twelfth of the entire design, and this comes back to the problem with with modular with the non-modular design is that for this build, I would need forty-eight assemblers, sixty refineries, twelve blenders, and one hundred and sixty-eight generators. That is an absolute insane amount of resources, and uh, building all of that 
before you even get to turn on the power plant is not fun. So this way, we split it into modules, and each module will now be two assemblers, five refineries, one blender, and 14 generators. What I'm doing for this belt and or this platform here is that I'm taking it nine tiles up, uh, four tiles, and then I make this little platform. Not really something I'm going to use to actually walk around here, but we can walk around here. Now that we can fly, that's much more convenient. I'm putting the glass floor in just to make sure that there's a bit of light and also so that we can see what's going on downstairs. I think that looks really nice as well. This is where we have the factory part and then we're surrounding it all the way around with the generators. That's like a nice little crisp build so that if we look at it from this side here, we will be seeing that we can get, and if we down here, we can see that this part here is the factory which we built, which is going to be the next thing. And then outside, we built the extra the power generation. Let's go up to our level here. Uh, I am using these around here at the edge just to make it a nice little accent on it. And just to make it, yeah, just to get that color in here as well. The colors are selected by the community. Whoever wins a hype train gets to choose the colors for the next, next uh, factory. You can see here I am making these uh, diagonal. And I do that by using the diagonal pieces and then the inverse down corner. Yeah, that's the thing. And I do that all the way around and that gives us a pretty nice little build here that is a non-square form. Right, so the first thing we do is uh, let's add the buildings so we can see what this here is and then go into the actual recipes we need. That will be built right here. So here we built the factory, the factory part of it and uh, we will go through it in uh, detail and how it works and it'll also reveal the specific alternate recipes I'm using. So the way I'm going to do this, there are two different ways that are highly effective to do this. And uh, they both revolve around diluted fuel. And I've chosen this. You can choose the other one. It is, uh, it's basically whether you feel that oil or sulfur is most uh, precious. In this case, I have oil. I, in this case, I have sulfur and coal nearby. So I choose the path that is using sulfur and coal. Uh, basically what I'm showing here, you need turbo fuel. And there are different versions of making turbine fuel. There are two versions, either from the heavy oil or from the diluted fuel. And I'm going to go through the diluted fuel version or the fuel version here. That means I need compacted coal and I need the fuel. Let's uh, walk through it. This is what I do. I do. Uh, first thing I do is I take the crude oil in and I have scaled this down to 93.75. It's very important. Uh, this means I get 37.5 outbound. This is the heavy oil residue that I need. Then I take the heavy oil residue into a blender nearby. And uh, if you look here, it, no, it's not making the turbo fuel. It is actually using the diluted fuel at 75%. 75% means I use the 37.5 heavy oil residue, and then I need twice as much water, so 75 water, and that gives me 75 fuel outbound. This is an absolutely insane recipe. It's probably like the, the, one, that, the one recipe that makes the biggest difference. This one, I mean, you just basically make fuel out of water and a bit of heavy oil residue. This is absolutely amazing. And uh, then for the compacted fuel, uh, the compacted coal, we just use this recipe. There's only one for compacted coal. So these are all alternate recipes that you, uh, you need. And here, compacted coal. I need two of these because I am scaling this towards each level here being uh, is being scaled towards these two operating 100% of the time. So I am scaling this towards 50 compacted coal per minute inbound then over on the other side over here we have this is scaled to 83.3333 something something and uh, that will give us i think we need to to do that it's 18 but there times 83.3 there uh, oh hold on let's do zero point that one times four there we go so that's 60 2.5 that is uh, our that's how much turbo fuel we're making this is again one of the recipes i am using compacted plus the fuel here now there is a, a way that you can if you use the other recipe for turbo fuel that one heavy turbo fuel then you need the heavy oil in here uh, the advantage of that is that you get you use less compacted coal but you need a lot more oil so which one is better well if you have lots and lots and lots of oil and 
feel that software is your main constraint, well then uh, choose this version, but that's a completely different design. But in this case, I am designing it towards having a single normal software mine, and that will give me 600 if I fully upgrade it and use a Mark III miner, which I will eventually do. So far, it's only running on a Mark II miner because I don't really have the turbo motors yet. But uh, that's, uh, that means I just can't build it all the way up to 12 levels, but only 6 levels. That's perfectly fine for now. So anyway, this is what I do, and uh, this is the recipe I use. And uh, it will be scaled towards using exactly the 50, 50 oil coming in, or 50 compacted coal that goes in here. And uh, that means those are the four alternate recipes we need. And uh, that the turbo fuel, the compacted coal, the diluted fuel in the blender, and the heavy oil, uh, the one with the... This one is actually also a, well, this heavy oil is an alternate heavy oil residue. And now the next thing we want to do is hook up all the power, the inputs and outputs. And there are here are a few quirks in order to hook it up correctly. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at that in more detail on how I did this. But by the way, before we do that, if you want to build this yourself and you somehow managed to build this platform correctly, and you're kind of in doubt, how do I place this? The trick is, this is the first one you place and you place it one, two, in the middle of the third tile. So you build that one here. And this is the location. So once you build that, it's it gets a lot easier because everything else is just flush to that side. This one is flush and this one is flush. These are all sort of put on the same middle line all the way through aligning to that one. Over on the other side, this one is the only way you can actually make it, basically. Uh, the important thing is that this output and uh, this input and this output have to be across from each other so that you can take a nice straight line in here. And of course, as always, I am always placing refineries like this because it makes it easier for us to do the belts in and outbound. So with that being said, it was just a little hint on how, if you want to build it yourself, how to build it. Let's. Uh, Let's jump and uh, let's take a look at how I do all the inbounds and outbounds to fit into all of this. So here we have uh, hooked up all of the machines in part of the factory build of this level. And there are two things I want to show you how that's done because this is a vertical build. So that means we are going to need pumps and we're going to need uh, elevators. It would be much, much easier to make it a flat build, but it will also just be a very boring build that I'm sure that you've seen other people here on YouTube make those kind of builds, but I want to make mine it's interesting and different and cool and I hope you appreciate that it's it's different and uh, I think it'll be absolutely amazing when I get this tower like 16, 14, 18, no, 12 levels high just towering over everything with the turbo fuel just lighting up. That's going to be super amazing. Anyway, the two things and uh, what we want to show is starting from the crude oil. This is where we get the fuel inbound. You can see here that these are, well, this intersection the junction is turned upside down and I want, just want to show you how to do that in case you are not don't know if I want this one to be up then no amount of spinning will make it go up that is okay because we can just do this one here and then I remove it and then you will see that now it rotates because it's hooked up to this point and then it can rotate to become vertical that's how I basically make it vertical and if I jump one level down then you can see how I do down here oops because it is important for me that there is one line coming in for everything that means there is only one oil line coming in this will be having 337.5 oil coming in per second it's gonna have more but that's the part I need it goes in here to the, the current one or the one below and then it goes up and of course I have a pump pushing it further up I'm just using pump mark 2 pumps because there's absolutely no reason not to use a mark 2 pump so that is one of the reasons why I one of the cool things of how to get it all the way up and that also means that we have it here this will be ready to bring it up to the next level once we build that but of course i am not building anymore the top level will be sort of only half built you will have the platform in here in the middle but i won't build up here and build the roof for it because i think the top level should look nice uh, the other thing is uh, the solids how do we do with that that's probably easier to uh, to show down here at this level 
Now, what is important for me is that as I zoom out, you will be able to see that there is one consistent line going all the way up. It would be much, much easier if I alternated it left, right, left, right. It would be so much easier, but that would not be uh, what I'm interested in. So what I'm doing here is it comes out of the ground, goes into a splitter. Uh, this splitter is then spitting it out to this level and then continues, continues up and into this one. This doesn't need to be a splitter because it's not connected to the next one. But it is just for me, it's much easier to do with a splitter. I'm just going to show you that one. And sorry if there's a bit of noise in the background. I have carpenters uh, building stuff in my house and uh, I, I don't know when they are going to be quiet, but I need to get this recorded today. So sorry about that. If you can hear it in the background, hopefully the noise cancellation does help a bit. Anyway, so this goes up here and the, basically the point is from here is that it just goes back so that it goes up and into the hole to the next level at exactly the right location. Moving on up, we have here getting that one in. And that means we have sulfur coming in here and we have the coal coming in here and they will spread evenly into these two. Now, the one thing we also have is that from our heavy oil residue production, we have some polymer resin. This needs to go down, so it goes in here, out here on a very slow Mark 1 belt, which will then be a merger and then go down. You can see it goes down here. It ho hopefully should. There we go. Zoom, zoom, go back, go down. And then you can see it all the way down there, and that's just being synced, sunk. Yeah. Flushed into a, an awesome sink. Right, moving on the, to the next part. Here we have the outbounds. This is the compacted coal going out and in here and just there the normal manifold going into all the locations. The reason why I said that I wanted to make this, uh, let me, sorry about that. That's a bad flying, okay, bad case of flying. This is why I'm always placing the refineries in the middle. I'm placing in the middle because that means when I place the splitters here in the middle, it'll exactly fit with a conveyor lift linking automatically between this and this. And I like that. The uh, the other alignment issue is the output of the blender has to go straight into the input of the refinery across from it. So you don't have any uh, kinks on the belts because we don't accept kinks on the belts. We have to re we'll re gladly rebuild the whole thing just to remove having things being one tile off. And that goes in here and that will now be producing. These are all producing a lot of turbo fuel and coming out on this belt. So the only thing we're missing at this point, yeah, don't mind the Christmas decoration, can't really get rid of it. Uh, the only thing we miss is now hooking up all of the all of the power plants out here, or the fuel generators, they can be nestled all the way around here. There should be 14 to consume. The amount being generated here is 62.5. And if I look at this, it is 62.5. Uh, that's not what I want. Let's see, I'm building 14 power plants. Yes, and 14 power plants, they will all, each of them will produce, will consume 4.5 per second. It's not how things work. They will consume 4.5 per second. That means I am potentially each floor can consume 63 and I'm producing 62.5. In my world, it's not even one off, it's half off. So that is brilliant, perfect ratio. I am very happy about it that it flickers just a teeny bit once in a while i you can always uh, downscale one of the generators if you feel so inclined i don't i'll just leave it as as it is and uh, whoa uh, what i will then do is uh, let's hook up the generators and take a look at that just like that all the power plants are installed here and uh, what i'm doing is i am just basically taking this one out directly and this other one directly and then aligning the other ones towards having in the middle here and also in the middle here then i can just squeeze in another one behind which is how i get this uh, heart shaped heart shaped turbo fuel uh, factory and then we can have two out here very flush against each other and then a single one on the side which is aligned towards the middle of this row so everything on this row is aligned this factory is now working and we've built another level once you get into the habit of it then that's what i'm saying 30 minutes to 45 minutes to to hook up another level that's at least for me and uh, whether you think that's a lot a lot of time or not a lot of time it uh, depends on sort of your your scope what i really like about it is that it's working and if i need more power i can just add another level that's the brilliant part of it and uh, we are going to just add one more level just to uh, just to show how uh, easy it is well I am I'm going to do that. 
and there is a new level added all the way up and here we have the next level added one of the cool things about this that means that if you want one want more to add more levels then uh, all you need to do is this is how i do it at least i go in and say i need two assemblers i need one blender and i need five refineries then i go over here power i need 14 fuel generators then you can also go in here and say well maybe i'm just gonna need three pumps and then you have over on the side how much you actually need your shopping list so you can go back and get the stuff you need on top of that remember also bring in concrete for the flooring and uh, copper sheets for copper sheets and a bit of plastic for the pipes and some steel beams on top of that because you're going to need that for the steel beams if you choose to do these around the edge they actually take quite a lot of steel beams so be uh, mindful of that and that means we now have our power tower and i can just keep expanding this one as much as i like oh, okay uh, let's not kill ourselves here okay there we go we are now hovering so this power tower is uh, just available for us to build and uh, yeah i hope th i hope this is inspiring i mean i don't really necessarily know if this is useful i don't want to get into a discussion of whether this is the absolute perfect recipe to use because there are different ways of doing it i absolutely love this recipe it fits me perfectly and uh, i feel that this is more valuable for me to use less oil and more sulfur for for all of this build uh, you might feel, feel that it's different, also depends on where you're building it. I'm building this one quite in the middle of the map, right here. And the reason I build it is because I have some sulfur over here, some coal over here, and some oil right here. So I felt that this was a good place to build it. And then it will also be sort of towering up above everything else in the, factor in the factory, because it's built quite a bit up, and I have a train station to support it. So uh, I hope that, uh, yeah, as I said, it is inspiring and uh, it can help you get started on the turbo fuel because I know that turbo fuel has something that, considering I've played 700 hours, I never got around to turbo fuel because exactly it was just such a massive thing that wouldn't be possible because I just didn't have the time to build to build the entire thing before even seeing the, the result of it. But in this case, we have a modular build, 2.1 gigawatt of power for each floor, and you can just add floors as you like. Hope you are finding it interesting. If you are, then be sure to hit the like button. It actually helps me quite a lot. And of course, if you have ideas or comments, then leave a comment below. And uh, I would appreciate it if you were subscribing, if you find this useful and want to see if I have uh, any other tricks up my sleeve in upcoming videos. And of course, if you want to do something extra for the channel, then there is a link to Patreon. And I really appreciate all the support that for Patreon and it helps me a lot to not be guided too much with the by the algorithm and much more towards what makes sense and what is the most valuable thing to do. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time, either here on YouTube or maybe over on Twitch. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay effective.